Hey, it's Pastor Mike. If you enjoy listening to this podcast and make it a regular part of your day, can I ask for your regular support? We really can't make any of our sermon series or devotions without the continual support of friends like you. Time of Grace, in case you didn't know, is 100% donor-funded, meaning it is your gifts that make it possible for us to use television and print and digital media to share the good news of God's amazing grace. Just click on the link in the episode notes, and thank you for all of your prayers and all of your support. God bless. The one true God reveals himself as the three-in-one God. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't understand that. I can't wrap my mind around it. Uh, over the years, I've just come to believe it through faith, accepting that that's who he is. Uh, it's, it's beyond my understanding, and that's okay. That's a good thing, uh, because who wants a God who can fit in a tiny little box that you can dissect and say, oh, this is who he is exactly. No, our God is so big and so strong that that's who he is. And so our big God, specifically God the Son, came down to this earth, and he lived 33 years. He ministered for three of those years, and towards the end of his ministry, he came to his disciples and said, I must go. And on the night that he was betrayed, that he was handed over to the authorities who were eventually going to kill him, he told them that I must go, and that's a good thing because then I can send you the Holy Spirit, the the advocate, your guide, your counselor, who's going to lead you into further truths, remind you of everything I've taught you, and, and give you further insight. And ultimately, you will be my witnesses starting in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the ends the earth. Now, when Jesus shared that with them, they didn't quite understand what he was saying, but they said, okay, we'll we'll do what you tell us to do. So Jesus ascends into heaven. He's he's gone from this earth, and they're waiting in Jerusalem now, the disciples are. And as they're waiting, the, the day of Pentecost comes. This is the harvest celebration for the Jewish people. It's 50 days after the Passover, and they're together, and all of a sudden there's this great wind, or it sounds like a wind, and these tongues of fire appear above them, and they began to speak in different languages, languages they had never spoken before, and they were speaking them fluently. So they go out onto the streets, and they start to preach the good news of Jesus Christ in these different languages. And people knew that these guys were from Galilee. They should not have been speaking these languages, and they were surprised and in awe. Some people were were questioning. They wondered, are these guys drunk? And that's when the Apostle Peter stands up, and he says, no, 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 no. These guys are not drunk. It's nine in the morning. They are full of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what the prophet Joel prophesied would happen. Now, the prophet Joel was an Old Testament prophet. He lived about 800 years prior to this event. And the Jewish people would have known his writings. He he wrote a a small book, just three chapters long, but it would have been read in the synagogues and in the temple courts uh, for centuries. So at this moment, Peter quotes from Joel in Acts chapter 2. He says this, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord." And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There's a lot going on in this. And it seems like the way that Joel is writing is this is one event. When in actuality, it's multiple events. When, when we read Old Testament prophecies, we have to understand it's kind of like a mountain range. Now, imagine you're driving up to the mountains. And in a mountain range, there's multiple mountains. But when you see them from a distance, they look like they're next to each other. But as you get closer, all of a sudden you start to see that distinction. And here's one. It's it's, it's closer, and this one's further away. We, you wouldn't have seen that until you gotten closer. Well, up to this point, the Lord Jesus has not come back yet, so that, that has not been fulfilled. But there are the signs that we are witnessing right now. He talks about the, the sun being darkened and the moon turning to blood. We've heard of blood moons before. Well, ultimately, what, what he's referencing here are the, the celestial changes, um, things like uh, eclipses and, and, and things like that, that we're seeing these signs pointing ahead to Jesus coming. But the sign that was specifically being fulfilled on the day of Pentecost is found for us in verses 17 and 18. I'll read those again. 
In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. The reason that the apostles were preaching in these different languages was not because they were filled up on the spirits of alcohol and liquor, but because they were filled by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This here proved why it was beneficial for Jesus to leave his disciples and send God the Holy Spirit. Now, what did he empower them to do? He empowered them to preach, to prophesy. Now, when we hear the word prophesy, normally we think of someone foretelling the future, which in some cases that's, the, that's what it is. But really, when you read it in the Bible, the word prophesy means to declare a message from God. To prophesy is to declare a message from God. That could be a message that pertains to the past, the present, or the future. And this is the message that Peter and the other apostles were declaring that day. Uh, It says this in verse 22. Peter says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on This is a bold message. And what you have to understand is that Peter and the other guys were not very bold (laughs) up until this point. Uh, They had literally hid behind locked doors because they were afraid that that crowd was going to do to them what they had done to Jesus. So they weren't out there preaching that morning because they all of a sudden willed themselves to, to be bold and brave. No, this was an act of the Holy Spirit working in and through them to, to point out what these people had witnessed that this crowd had seen the miracles of Jesus. They had heard about how he healed people and raised them back to life. And yet with the help of wicked wicked men, they put the author of life to death. But God the Father brought God the Son back to life. And what did Joel say earlier? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What's really amazing about this is that even the people that murdered Jesus, God the Son, were given the opportunity to repent and be saved. And that is exactly the work of the Holy Spirit. His job is to convict us of when we mess up royally. And and it's good when you feel bad for doing bad things, but you're not supposed to stay there in that guilt because the Holy Spirit wants to transition you to that point where, where you understand that there's a way to be right with God again. And that, that way is not being better. It's, it's not being good enough. It's by putting your faith that Jesus Christ was perfect in your place, that he paid the ransom price, that he rose from the dead, declaring that you belong to him. The Holy Spirit used that exact same message, and he, and he preached it through the apostles, so that on that day of Pentecost, 3,000 men, women, and children were saved. They came to a knowledge of the truth. And here's the thing. Everyone who believes in that message, everyone who's been baptized into the name of Jesus has received that same Holy Spirit power to declare this message to the world, to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. As the prophet Joel said, the Holy Spirit does not discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, young or old, rich or poor. He has given you and me the ability to share this good news with other people. So that means you don't have to be a pastor or a priest or a Sunday school teacher or a small group Bible study leader. You don't need a pulpit or a platform. You could be a little child playing out on the playground, going down a slide, swinging on a swing and sharing your faith with another person. You could be a mom or a dad and sharing your faith, the good news of Jesus with your children. You could be a carpenter, a nurse, a receptionist, a dental assistant, a police officer, a consultant, a banker, a lawyer, a school superintendent, a daycare provider, a teacher, a personal assistant, an engineer, a government worker, delivery person, massage therapist. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. God has poured out his Holy Spirit on you, just like he did on those apostles, so that you can be his witness. Let's pray. 
Holy Spirit, sometimes we, we limit ourselves in what we say about God the Son, about what Jesus has done for us. And Lord, uh, you've just reminded us today through this message that there are no boundaries, there are no barriers. Uh, you have taken them all away so that no matter who we are, no matter what we do in life, that we have opportunities. You've put us in the right place at the right time. You've surrounded us by friends and coworkers and classmates so that we can share the good news of Jesus with them. Give us the same boldness that you gave to Peter and the apostles on the day of Pentecost. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.